As guitar players, we're pretty much always looking to add something new to our rigs, and admittedly, I'm no stranger to that. And as many of you guys know, I love guitars, and that's mostly what this channel is based on. But I've already bought my dream guitar, so what's next? Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what's next. What guitars am I going to look at getting next? So there's six guitars on my list that I think I will eventually own, and they're kind of ranged from what I'm probably going to get the soonest to what's going to come later down the road. So I hope you guys enjoy, and let's hop right into it. I've mentioned this many times on my channel before, but the first guitar I think I'm probably going to get next is a Fender Telecaster. And something that I am perfectly willing to admit is that I have very, very specific tastes when it comes to guitars. For example, I love gold tops but I pretty much only like gold tops with P90s. I don't really like them with another pickup. Now that's not to say it doesn't sound good. Of course, a gold top with humbuckers is going to sound good too. I just think that the P90s fit that specific guitar better. And I think it's enough to where I wouldn't want to own one with humbuckers. Except for this one, of course, but this one's not staying super long, but the video's coming soon. And my taste with Telecasters isn't really any less picky. And for me, I don't really like new Telecasters. I think they have to be beat up. And I don't think that if they're super fresh and super new, they don't really speak to me. Now I'm definitely looking at getting a just more player grade beat up guitar because I think that's what speaks to me the most, but I also wouldn't be opposed to buying a relic. Now I know, I know, relics can be a little bit controversial, but hear me out. If you buy a guitar that's already beat up, there's nothing wrong with that, and that's probably what I'm going to look into doing, but a relic, you're able to add your own story to it. The main reason why people don't really like relics is because a lot of people say they're, they're lifeless, they don't have a story to them, but to me that doesn't really matter. I don't disagree with that. Of course, it's a, it's a new guitar that just happens to look old. That's not a problem with me. I'm not opposed to building my own story with a guitar because, I mean, it's still going to speak to me more because of the way it looks. It looks more beat up. However, I'm also not opposed to just getting a guitar that happens to be older and more beat up just from years and years of playing. But the moral of the story, I just want a Fender Telecaster that looks and appears to be beat up and broken in. Honestly, don't really care about the color, don't care if it's a part caster, don't really care anything about that. The hard part is finding one. I'm having a little bit of a difficult time finding a used Telecaster that happens to be beat up and not relict. Because the relic ones are obviously pretty expensive. And it's actually been pretty difficult, at least for me, to find a Telecaster that has been played enough to look like a relic guitar. And not be super vintage to where it's going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars extra anyways. But a Fender Telecaster with preferably no modifications. I don't like Telecasters with any kind of humbuckers or P90s or anything like that. I just like normal two single coil with, you know, lipstick in the neck, of course. Uh, Telecaster, nothing special about it. That's just what speaks to me. Another guitar I'm looking at getting, and it's not a very specific search, but I'm looking at getting a new Super Strat. If you guys have watched my channel before, you guys may have seen this guitar here. This is my 1987 Kramer F6000. Now, this is the epitome of an 80s Super Strat. It's literally from the 80s, and it's a Super Strat. And I do really, really like this guitar. The purple finish is gorgeous. The neck feels very nice. It's beat up, you know, pretty much the perfect amount. Maybe a little bit more could be done to it. But I love this guitar very, very much. However, I don't think this is a super strat for me. I don't know if I'll keep this guitar or not. I think I'm going to keep it for the moment. Um, and if I get a new super strat and I just find myself never playing this one, then yeah, I'll probably sell it. But for right now, I think I'll keep it, but just happen to add a new super strat to the collection on top of this. But what I don't like about this guitar is I don't like the middle pickup. I don't like the way it looks, and I also don't like how it has a neck single coil. I prefer it to have a humbucker. That way I can add, you know, both humbuckers in together instead of the single coil necks. I think it just sounds a little bit better, and because it's so 80s, you know, hair metal style, I think you need both humbuckers. But outside of that, this guitar is really cool. I love this guitar. It's It's got, you know, it's got that 80s, you know, style to it. It's, it's pretty rare, which is really cool, but it's just not the one for me. It just doesn't really speak to me as much as I know some other guitar could. But for right now, I'm going to keep it, but I'm definitely keeping my eyes out for a new Super Strat. The Super Strat I have in mind is a Friedman Cali. But like I said, it's not super, super specific. I really like the Friedman Cali. Love the way it looks. I love the way it sounds. And I've never actually played one, so, you know, that's kind of something I have to keep in mind as well. But unlike the Telecaster, it doesn't have to be exactly what I just described. It could be any color. It could be pretty much any brand. I don't really care as long as it does that 80s shred style stuff that I want to play. So I'm not going to be super picky when looking for a new Super Strat, as long as it speaks to me. I actually played this Charvel at a uh, guitar center not too long ago, and it was actually a fantastic guitar, and I really, really liked it. I actually almost walked out with it. I think the color was called like the Chameleon Burst or, or something kind of weird like that, but I loved that guitar very much. However, when I took in the purple Super Strat up there for a trade-in, they kind of gave me a slap in the face of an offer in terms of the money, so it just wasn't worth it for me. And they were too similar for me just to buy the guitar and have two Super Strats at the time. 
But a new Super Strat, like I said, is something I have to add to the collection very soon. And before we get on to the next guitar, let's talk about my giveaway. We have just under two weeks to announce the giveaway winner. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is go to my Instagram here, follow it, and then you have to go to the most recent post, and then you have to answer the question that is in the caption of the post. So if you follow the account, answer the question, you're automatically entered in the giveaway. If you are chosen to win, the prize will be if you send me anything from Reverb or, or uh, Guitar Center, Sam Ash, anything like that, you send me a, like anything under $500 excluding shipping, I will pay for it and send it right to your house. And again, that $500 is excluding taxing and shipping and anything like that. Well, how do you know if you won? Well, with that exact same account that you followed in comments in the post, I will send you a personal DM letting you know that you won. And on top of that, there will also be an announcement video in which I will verbally say your name, that way you know you won. So thank you guys so much for entering, and let's get on with the video. Another guitar I've always wanted is just a guitar from 2003. The significance of 2003 happens to be the year I was born. I think that's something that all guitar players should kind of look into, is trying to find a birth year, or even more specifically, a birthday guitar. I never owned a 2003 guitar, but I've always been looking out for one, and I don't really care what it is. It could be a Telecaster from 03, it could be a Super Shy from 03, it could be a 335 from 03, I don't really care what model it is. I just want a guitar from 2003. Yes, I know, very specific goal. But what is a little bit more specific is the next guitar I'm looking at getting. And what I'm looking at getting is a Les Paul Standard. Now yes, I do have the, the Standard with P90s and I do have the 79 Les Paul Custom. However, I want a Les Paul with humbuckers that doesn't cost a ton, a ton of money. As many of you guys know, I'm in college and there's a lot of things you can't account for in college. Part of that includes other people coming in your room that you don't know, you know maybe your roommate invites you to some other knucklehead and they, they do some dumb stuff to your guitars. I don't want to take that risk with bringing my Les Paul Custom because that guitar costs quite a bit more than a, than a used Les Paul Standard. And the reason why I want a Les Paul Standard is because nothing beats the sound of a Les Paul with humbuckers. That also doesn't cost, you know, a little under 10 grand. So this guitar basically would serve as a beater for me playing in college because I play it live, you know, I've played a lot, I don't... My, my mind isn't set on, you know, being super attached to this guitar, so maybe after college I'd sell it, but I mean, of course, I'm always open to, to keeping guitar if I develop, you know, a passion for that specific model, but this guitar would just serve as kind of a beater. Don't really care how much it costs. If it may, heck, maybe even buy one with a headstock repair. Wouldn't really bother me at all because it would just be a tool. It'd be a guitar that I just use to play and beat up on every single day. While at college, that is. So my budget with this guitar wouldn't be super, super high because I'm not looking for anything too special. But a guitar that would be special is a Gibson 335. These semi-hollow guitars are basically a guitar that every guitar player could probably use in their collection. I have played several 335s and every single one of them sounds so cool because they're just such a big sounding guitar. If you guys think Les Pauls sound big in terms of their sound, 335 completely blows it out of the water. No, this, like the Telecaster, is another one of those guitars where it's very specific in my taste. I would much prefer a red 335, however, unlike most people, I don't like the dot inlays. Now yeah, I know the dot's a little more specific when it comes to 335s, I just happen to like the block inlays more. And right now, I think the only option that you can get the block inlays from Gibson is the figured version of the, uh, of the 335. And that one costs quite a bit more than the regular one. So right now I'm kind of looking into buying a used one. Again, I could care less if it's beat up in player's grade, but I think a 335 with some dot, or not dot, inlays, some block inlays is a great addition to my collection. Now that right there is the amount of guitars that I think are going to be added to the collection probably within the next couple years. Now let's talk about some guitars that I think are going to be a little bit further down the road. These ones are a little bit more on the, that dream guitar level. Things I know I can and probably will eventually own, but it's not going to be soon. I just want to start off by showing this beautiful 2005 Les Paul Standard uh, from the Custom Shop. It's a 59 reissue and oh my gosh, look at that top. This has definitely got to be one of the most gorgeous guitars I've ever seen. And I think a Custom Shop Les Paul is something eventually I would like to own. Another guitar that I would love to own is any, pretty much any one of Gibson's art style guitars. And I know up here I have a bunch of pictures of Les Paul Supremes, which of course are a guitar I'd love to own, but it doesn't have to be a Supreme. If I can find a Les Paul with a flame maple neck, that's a purchase I know I'd have to make. Because they're not common and they look very, very, very good. I know the Les Paul Supreme doesn't actually have a flame maple neck, however, they are gorgeous guitars with a carved back and they don't have the back plates and it's just a very interesting guitar while still having that Les Paul spirit to it. And also, there was a lot of Les Paul Supremes made in 2003, so hey, maybe that could be the guitar that checks that box too. Now lastly, kind of adding on to that dream category, I want to talk about PRS private stock guitars. Now these guitars are very, very expensive, which is again why I don't think I'll own one anytime soon. But later down the line, maybe. But these private stock guitars are so gorgeous. As most of you guys know, and if you didn't already, you could probably pick it up from this video, I'm a Gibson guy. 
However, the PRS Private Stock Guitars, in my opinion, are the most gorgeous guitars from any guitar brand. There's so many options, the crazy tops you can get, the crazy colors, the crazy inlays, you know, the really cool flame maple fretboards, which just look incredible. Those are the guitars that I would love to own. Not only that, but I don't really see many people playing these private stock instruments. And that's probably because they're so expensive, a lot of people just don't want to. However, I think if I were to buy one of these guitars, I would play it every single day just as I play my Les Paul Custom every single day. Now I know the Les Paul Custom and the PRS Private Stock guitars are in completely different price ranges, that being the Private Stock's much more expensive. However, I still think the same concept would apply that I would play it every single day, regardless of the price, because guitars are meant to be played. That doesn't mean I'm gonna beat it up, of course, but I'm definitely gonna take care of that thing and play it a lot. But I think that just about wraps it up for this video. I think those are the guitars, kind of pretty much in order of what I think will get next. Now I know, I'm going to be a little bit realistic with myself, things never really go according to plan. I'm probably gonna find a guitar that I didn't think I'd like and probably buy that one instead in a different order. So it's definitely not gonna go exactly how it is planned in this video. But if it were a perfect world, I think this would be the order of how I get those guitars. So, if you guys liked this video, feel free to click like. And if you loved it and you wanna see more content from me, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.